if you're an avid bird watcher, it helps to be good at climbing trees. <whistles> and to have a friend who's good at getting birds' attention. <laughs> nice shot. You're getting quite the collection of bird photos, George. <gasps> Different birds talk to each other by making different sounds. Easy for birds, not so easy for us. But luckily, there are bird calls that do the work for you. See? The pictures on the side tell you which bird you're calling. Try one. George had photos of robins and warblers, but he really wanted a picture of an osprey. Nice job! Only ospreys are harder to find. I've never seen one myself. Huh. Ospreys usually live near the ocean or big lakes where they can find more fish to eat. But if you're lucky, someday you might see one. <laughs> popcorn! Fresh popcorn! It's Mr. Popper in his popcorn wagon. Woo! <laughs> George, see any good birds today? <laughs> You'll have to show me your photos. Popcorn and a lemonade? You betcha. Oh, want to help me make a new batch? <laughs> George loved helping Mr. Popper. He leveled off one cup of popcorn, poured it into the machine, and then... I know! It started all by itself! Mr. Popper always served the popcorn the same way. First, he grabbed a cup and a bag. Second, he pressed the button for the lemonade. Third, he scooped in the popcorn and tapped the bag. And he always served his customers with a smile. Oops. <laughs> I like to keep things tidy. Now, let's see those photos. My goodness! Did you see a yellow-throated warbler today? Mm-hmm. We sure did. He flew off that way. I wish I could have seen him. <laughs> You'd run my wagon for me? <laughs> sure. George can run the wagon, and I'll show you where we saw the warbler. Oh, goody! My nephew wears this when he helps me. <laughs> Perfect fit. Shouldn't have many customers. It's a slow day. And just like that, a monkey was in charge of a popcorn wagon. Excuse me, I'd like a popcorn and lemonade, please. It was his first customer. Make that customers. George's slow day had suddenly gotten very busy. He tried to remember all the steps. But he got off to a rocky start. of the order was all wrong. Hmm. And Bill's decorations were already down. But not George's. Ooh. Ha! She's still got some life in her. 
Uh, sort of. <laughs> oh, hey, I almost forgot the erector set. Ready to tackle the 1889 Paris exhibition? <laughs> hmm, sounds like a big project. What do you say we set it up in the attic where there's more room? Uh -huh. uh, hang in there, George. I'm just getting it started for you. Then she's all yours. It had been too cold to climb with Jumpy Squirrel. Or run with Dotty Deer. Or waddle with Dumpling Duck. George missed his animal friends. Since it was too cold for George to play outside, maybe his friends could come inside for a sleepover. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, are these sleeping bags? <laughs> okay, so you want to have a sleepover with your friends? Yeah! <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> oh, and when you talk to <laughs> Allie and Bill and whoever that other person is, See if one of them is good with erector sets. If you're having a sleepover, you'll need snacks, fun party games, and cozy sleeping bags. Now all George needed were guests. Jumpy didn't like being startled. Whatever the monkey wanted, it had better be good. <coughs> Who was Jumpy to say no to free nuts? Dottie wondered where Jumpy had gone. If it was good enough for the squirrel and the deer, Dumpling wanted in too. <laughs> Maybe they'd like to play a game. Dumpling knew what to do with eggs. Fortunately, George had extra game pieces. <laughs> Jumpy thought they were nuts. And Dottie thought the dice were sugar cubes. Maybe they should just go to bed. Was this their first sleepover? George would have to show them how sleeping bags worked. George and the man with the yellow hat had been invited by Mr. Quint to go ice fishing. George thought he should practice. The trouble was, yeah. 
the ice weren't biting. Hey, George. What happened to all our... George, you do realize that ice fishing doesn't mean fishing for ice. <laughs> Mr. Quint will show you. Better go pack a coat, hat, and mittens. It's going to be cold up north. Mr. Quint, we're here. Well, hello, you two. Come on in. Thanks for the invitation. I have always wanted to try ice fishing. Woo! Ah. <laughs> ah. Well, to get where the fish are, you have to drill a hole, George. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> George doesn't believe that fish can live in the ice. See down there? The fish are in the water. Under the ice. <laughs> no, George. It takes an expert fisherman, <clears throat> like me, to catch them. They don't just jump up and say hello. <laughs> Oh, my goodness! Ah. Maybe they do jump up and say hello. Ah. <laughs> it was George's old friends, Professors Einstein and Pizza. You look a lot like our pal George. Why, it is George. What brings you up here, fellas? We're here on an important mission. But we're having trouble with our sub. Someone spilled his juice box on the control panel. Someone drives like this. Whee! Whee! At any rate, it appears that we'll have to scrap the mission. Wait a minute, Einstein. George is here. <gasps> the the mini sub. George, how would you like to do some whale counting for us? <laughs> um, that sounds like yes to me. The, the mission, mission is saved. saved. Okay, hey, George, in you go. You remember how to use all the controls? Thanks, Mr. Quint. George, this time of year, several species of whales are swimming to their winter homes. We're trying to track them as they migrate. Your mission is to count the whales you see going by. <laughs> now, see the screen on your dashboard? Uh -huh. That shows the different kinds of whales you might encounter. Ah. Beluga whales are white, bowhead whales are dark, and narwhals have long tusks. Woo! <laughs> now, George, whales aren't fish. They come up to the surface of the water to breathe air. Some of them also swim really deep, so you'll have to look up and down. When you see one of these whales, just touch the picture on the screen that matches it, and the computer will count it. <laughs> okay, George. Here we go! It 
It was autumn in the country. Leaves were falling, and so were acorns. Jumpy had stashed away plenty for winter. But there was always room for more. Jumpy's acorn stash was gone. He had just hidden those nuts. Whoever had taken them couldn't have gone far. He just had to find someone eating. George, come back and finish lunch. <laughs> the monkey was eating Jumpy's nuts for lunch? Jumpy had to get his acorns back. He would watch that monkey like a hawk. And his friend got into the car and went home. Good night, George. <laughs> oh, no. You can play with Jumpy tomorrow. Jumpy so grumpy about. He liked nuts. Maybe if George gave him a nut, he'd feel better. Jumpy couldn't believe it. The monkey was stealing acorns right under his nose. saved more nuts than that by fall. Someone might have taken them. And Jumpy seemed to think that someone was George. If someone had taken those nuts, it was up to George to find out who. Those be Jumpy's nuts? Hiya, George. Want a piece of pie? Fresh out of the oven. Huh? But how could Mrs. Rankins have gotten up Jumpy's tree? possible. <laughs> there had been a storm last night. Maybe the wind blew so hard, the nuts rolled out of the tree. And Mrs. Rankins found them. George had to tell Jumpy. He would see it was all a big mistake. Jumpy could see there was a mistake, all right. His nuts were acorns. And those nuts were pecans. Jumpy was right. Mrs. Rankin's nuts were different. George loved visiting the Maldives mostly because of Uncle Hassan. 
And now breathe calmly in and out. Whose morning ritual included yoga. No. Oh. He made them traditional Maldivian food. Not too spicy, I hope. <laughs> just like your mom used to make. And just when George thought it couldn't get any better, it did. Snorkeling? Oh, that's a great idea. And of course you can use my boat. You'll love it. The coral reef is the home of so many different kinds of fish. There are glassfish, parrotfish, butterflyfish, and surgeonfish. Oh, George, you ready to go snorkeling? Take a trip, see somewhere new. Learn about what others like to do There's different words and different ways At every turn you'll be amazed So head on out There's so much to see A million things to spark your curiosity There's something there So, the simplest route is to go around this bit of land. George wanted to bring his ball, but was there an extra seat? Oh. <laughs> yes, George? <laughs> sure, you can put the ball in there. Seems easy enough. Ready to get going, George? Ah! All right, off we go. Bye, happy snorkeling. See you later. Ah! Huh, that person must be expecting a big emergency. Here, George, I'll steer while you navigate. <laughs> we want to keep going east. Keep the E pointed toward the front of the boat and make sure the red arrow is pointed toward the end. If the red arrow moves away from the end, let me know. <laughs> There's nothing a little monkey likes better than playing in the sand at the beach. 
except for finding seashells. <laughs> Looks like the ocean gave you a present, George. Oh, George, we better hurry. Our tour of the Marine Rehab Center starts in a few minutes. <laughs> George liked having his special shell, but he didn't want it to break. George didn't know he was going to see his friends, Professors Einstein and Pizza. Thanks for inviting us to check out your marine lab. Our pleasure. We love sharing our underwater world with visitors. And we're hoping you'll help us clean the fish tanks later. <laughs> wow, those are a lot of fish tanks. Oh. <laughs> George had never seen an animal with eight arms before. Why, that's Octavia the octopus. And like all octopuses, she's very smart. George could do a lot with four hands, but what could he do if he had eight? <laughs> George noticed one of Octavia's arms was short. Hmm. <laughs> oh, she's fine. Before Octavia came to us, she must have lost one of her arms. Luckily, she's an octopus, so it's growing back. Oh, huh? wait, what? That's right, an octopus can regrow an arm. Not only that, she can taste with her arms, too. Here, hold this out, George. Ah! She's tasting it with her arms, the way you taste with your tongue. Huh? Huh? George wondered what it would be like to taste something with his arms. <laughs> Look, George. Huh? Seahorses. The seahorses were beautiful. Their bright colors reminded George of his shell. George realized he'd put his seashell on the table earlier. What's the matter, George? You're looking for your shell? Hmm, well, maybe you dropped it somewhere? But George hadn't dropped it. He'd left it on the table. He was sure of that. Well, it wouldn't be the first thing that's gone missing around here lately. Oh, no. Just yesterday, I left my shoes in the lab, and one of them disappeared, too. <laughs> anyway, don't worry, George. There are lots of shells around here. We'll find you one that's just as nice. But George wanted his shell the one the ocean had given him. But where could it be? <gasps> what was a snake doing in water? <clears throat> Maybe the snake took George's shell and then hid out in the fish tank. He can't come out of the tank, George. That's an eel. Huh? Eels are a kind of fish. A long, skinny fish. If the huh. eel couldn't come out of the water, it couldn't have taken George's shell or Professor Einstein's shoe. So where was it? Wow. <gasps> Scallops. See those? It was the perfect afternoon for a trip. George and his friend were going someplace special. 
to see the stars. George knew the stars were really, really far away. He wanted to make sure he had everything he needed for the trip. Including trail mix. If you're going into outer space, it's a good idea to bring a snack. Ready, George? Uh, George, it's not that far to Mr. Griggs's house. You can take a toy and a snack, but let's leave the rest here, buddy, okay? Let's go see some stars. George wasn't sure how they were going to see stars in a house. Unless they were friends of Mr. Griggs. <laughs> see, George? There it is. Ah! It's something, all right. Mr. Griggs built his own observatory. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. And on the perfect night. Let's go on up. George learned Mr. Griggs was an astronomer. He studied the moon and stars and all sorts of other things in space. Oh, that's a picture of a supernova, an exploding star. Do you want to see how I got all these pictures? <laughs> Can't wait. Right this way. Welcome to my observatory. Amazing. And this is the telescope I use to see the stars. Wow. You've come on the perfect night to see something astounding. <laughs> Isn't it exciting? <laughs> oh, allow me to introduce Failsafe. This is the first time I've ever met a monkey. Hello, and hello, tall person wearing yellow. Uh, hi. Failsafe helps me control the telescope. He took all the pictures you just saw. <laughs> I can sense you're confused. It works like this. Say we want to look at the Crab Nebula. We point the telescope toward one teeny tiny area of the sky. You can't see it with your eyes, but our powerful telescope can. And I can snap a picture. Tonight, we'll get a picture of a comet hitting the planet Mars. What's a comet? Oh, I'm glad you asked. It's a giant, giant, giant chunk of ice and dust that flies through space like a snowball. As it nears the sun, some of the ice starts to melt and trails off. It looks like a big, shiny tail. Wow. Wow, indeed. Sometimes comets collide with other objects in space, like the one that will hit Mars tonight. Little monkeys love riding buses. But a ride on the Z-Bus was the best trip of all. Because it ended at... Welcome to Zany Island. <gasps> Say hello to our new friends, Petey. Hello. 
How would you like your own Petey? <laughs> wow, nice, George. There'll be adventure ahead. And here's a map to keep you on course. Ah, have fun. George planned on having a great time. And thanks to his map, he wouldn't miss a thing. George and his friend rode fast rides, slow rides, <laughs> Wet rides <laughs> and scenic rides oh. until one by one George, Petey, and the man with the yellow hat had ridden them all. Too bad they don't come in yellow. Lucky you! You got the last one in your size. We're usually out of stock by this time of day. <laughs> oh! <gasps> Avast, matey! That be your warning shot. Zany Island be cruising in 30 minutes, I say. One more ride? Did you have a good time today, George? <laughs> what was your favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sure had fun with Petey. <laughs> uh, huh? <gasps> hey, um, where is Petey? D did we leave him behind? I know you're worried about Petey, <laughs> but it's really late. I, I promise we'll look for him first thing in the morning, okay? <laughs> but George didn't want to wait until morning. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't have to. The Z bus ran all night. He could rescue Petey now. Zany <laughs> Island was a big place. Good thing George had kept his map. It showed everywhere he and Petey had been that day. Let the hunt for Parrot Petey begin. But George wondered where to look first. <laughs> Maybe right here. It was the last day of the year, which meant George was busy putting up decorations. Uh-oh, streamers get away from you again, George? After decorating, there was baking and preparing for guests. Looks like we're all set for New Year's. You're right, George. Tomorrow starts the brand new year. Which means we'll need a new calendar. We'll 
will tear off the last number at midnight. And you know what happens then. Yeah. Happy, Happy New Year! Year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you think you can really stay up till midnight this year, George? <laughs> well, if you want to be awake at midnight, it might help to take a nap. <laughs> okay, your choice. But you might fall asleep and miss the party like last year. <laughs> George didn't want to miss the party. <laughs> so he decided to give the nap a try. But it was too bright to sleep. Finally, George was ready to fall asleep. George, what are you... <laughs> Trouble sleeping, huh? Uh -huh. You know what my grandmother used to tell me? Uh -huh. If you can't sleep, count sheep. Give it a try. You'll be asleep in no time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. One. George needed to count more than one sheep to get sleepy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Luckily, he knew just where to find some. George couldn't tell which ones he'd counted. <laughs> if George wanted to know how many sheep there were, he could only count each sheep once. <laughs> so he asked the sheep to line up. sheep to follow directions was harder than George expected. If only sheep came with numbers. <laughs> George, I thought you were taking a nap. <laughs> okay, have fun with our calendar. Now George could number the sheep as he counted them. <laughs> sheep number one was very friendly. It was a perfect day in the country for a hike. <gasps> Some places in the country were hard to reach. They were worth it. Pretty 
good hiking for a city kid, George. <laughs> We're almost there. The super secret hidden nobody but us knows about in view. <laughs> hey, I'm getting hungry. Sandwich break? on my leg, George. Aww. Maybe if I go slow. <laughs> Ouch! That's not going to work. <laughs> George knew he needed to go for help. <laughs> hey, thanks for the lift, guys. You did a great job getting help for your friend, George. I called your mom, Bill. She's gonna meet you at the hospital. You know, I'm actually looking forward to going there. You are? Yeah. They have the best fruit cup I've ever tasted. It almost makes all this worth it. Hey, George. Would you like to ride in the ambulance with us? <laughs> sure, why not? It's job to give people first aid and bring them to the hospital, George. Right. And the ambulance has all the equipment we need. It's almost like a rolling hospital. Wow, you seem to know a lot of people here. Yeah, I've been in the hospital before. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, broke my arm playing chess. Met everybody. Well, hello, Bill. What happened? Hurt my leg. What was it this time? Checkers? <sighs> Turkey sandwich. <laughs> it's a wristband for the doctors and nurses to keep track of all of us patients. <laughs> Well, Bill, it looks like your leg is broken in three places. Really? <coughs> Bill's leg looked like it was all in one piece. Huh? <laughs> you can't see the break on the outside. That's why we radiologists use an x-ray machine. It takes pictures of how you look on the inside. <coughs> George had seen an x-ray before. <coughs> <coughs> That's right. There are fractures here, here, and here. What happened? Slipped on a turkey sandwich. Of course. I should have guessed. George thought he'd like to have an x-ray machine of his own. <laughs> Looks like Bill's gonna need a cast so his leg can heal. And Bill's decorations were already down. But not George's. She's still got some life in her. Uh, sort of. <gasps> oh, hey, I almost forgot the erector set. Ready to tackle the 1889 Paris exhibition? Hmm, <laughs> sounds like a big project. What do you say we set it up in the attic where there's more room? Hang in there, George. I'm just getting it started for you. Then she's all yours. <laughs> it had been
been too cold to climb with Jumpy Squirrel. Or run with Dotty Deer. Or waddle with Dumpling Duck. George missed his animal friends. Since it was too cold for George to play outside, maybe his friends could come inside for a sleepover. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, are these sleeping bags? <laughs> okay, so you want to have a sleepover with your friends? Yeah! <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> oh, and when you talk to Allie and Bill and whoever that other person is, See if one of them is good with erector sets. If you're having a sleepover, you'll need snacks. Fun party games. And cozy sleeping bags. Now all George needed were guests. Jumpy didn't like being startled. Whatever the monkey wanted, it had better be good. <laughs> Who was Jumpy to say no to free nuts? Dottie wondered where Jumpy had gone. If it was good enough for the squirrel and the deer, Dumpling wanted in, too. <laughs> Maybe they'd like to play a game. Dumpling knew what to do with eggs. Fortunately, George had extra game pieces. <laughs> Jumpy thought they were nuts. And Dottie thought the dice were sugar cubes. Maybe they should just go to bed. Huh? Was this their first sleepover? George would have to show them how sleeping bags worked. George and the man with the yellow hat had been invited by Mr. Quint to go ice fishing. George thought he should practice. The trouble was, the ice weren't biting. Hey, George, what happened to all our... George, you do realize that ice fishing doesn't mean fishing for ice. Mr. Quint will show you. Better go pack a coat, hat, and mittens. It's gonna be cold up north. <laughs> Mr. Quint, we're here. Well, hello, you two. Come on in. 
thanks for the invitation. I have always wanted to try ice fishing. Woo! Well, to get where the fish are, you have to drill a hole, George. George doesn't believe that fish can live in the ice. See down there? The fish are in the water. Under the ice. <laughs> no, George. It takes an expert fisherman, <clears throat> like me, to catch them. They don't just jump up and say hello. <laughs> Oh, my goodness! Ah. Maybe they do jump up and say hello. Ah. It was George's old friends, Professors Einstein and Pizza. You look a lot like our pal George. Why, it is George. What brings you up here, fellas? We're here on an important mission. But we're having trouble with our sub. Someone spilled his juice box on the control panel. Someone drives like this. Whee! Whee! At any rate, it appears that we'll have to scrap the mission. Wait a minute, Einstein. George is here. <gasps> the the mini sub. George, how would you like to do some whale counting for us? <laughs> um, that sounds like yes to me. The, the mission, mission is saved. saved. Okay, George, in you go. You remember how to use all the controls? Thanks, Mr. Quint. George, this time of year, several species of whales are swimming to their winter homes. We're trying to track them as they migrate. Your mission is to count the whales you see going by. <coughs> now, see the screen on your dashboard? Uh -huh. That shows the different kinds of whales you might encounter. Ah. Beluga whales are white, bowhead whales are dark, and narwhals have long tusks. Woo! <laughs> now, George, whales aren't fish. They come up to the surface of the water to breathe air. Some of them also swim really deep, so you'll have to look up and down. When you see one of these whales, just touch the picture on the screen that matches it, and the computer will count it. <laughs> okay, George. Here we go! Oh. 